South Jamaica, baby, they made me to be the greatest Serving the deed of my creators, fresh off of my high haters It's the king again, Magdalene, Shofit, bragging and boasting yo what up y'all it's your boy dollars welcome back to the channel it's another day another dollar video and i'm going to be reacting to the eight most disturbing things discovered in basements from the youtube channel chilling scares you know i love a good scary video so hopefully this would be a good one nothing is more scarier than a creepy basement right you got creepy basements creepy attics y'all let me know what is more scarier to yeah, I think I'd be more scared going into the basement than going into an attic. I don't know. It's just something about basements that are creepy, you know, especially it depends where you at too, you know. That's why when you move into certain places, certain homes and the, yeah, certain homes, y'all got to do your history, bro, cuz you never know who lived in that house before you, what could have happened. Probably has some evil satanic people doing rituals in the basement. There's a portal down there. Who knows? That's why you got to do the, the history, man. But anyway, let's check this video out. This first discovery happened to multiple students of Ohio State University back in September of 2013. The group of students only recently started leasing an off-campus house close to the school. Hmm. And it was in this house where they would make a disturbing find in the basement. <laughs> Only a month after moving in, the students would start to notice small, yet strange occurrences in the house. Hmm. Things like cupboards, their oven, and even their microwave being left open. So, I'm assuming there was somebody living in the basement the whole time? The house was three stories, with a squatter. five students on the first floor and ten others on the second and third. So, obviously it was difficult to keep track of everyone. But, when they realized none of them were responsible, they decided to search the house. More specifically, the basement. Nobody checked the they basement when they moved door, in? Which they had originally assumed was a utility closet that the landlord wanted to be kept locked. Though, at no point in time was this confirmed, and after calling the landlord about it, they were informed this wasn't the case. The door should not have been locked for any reason. Wow. The landlord would end up sending a maintenance worker to check it out, and after breaking down the door, a room that was clearly being lived in was revealed. The room had framed photos and school... Son was living in their basement all comfortable. He had a bed, pillows, a fax machine. Son had everything down there, bro. I'm surprised he didn't even have a TV or something, bro. A Super Nintendo or something. Textbooks scattered around. The students would change all the locks that night and leave a note for whoever was living in the room saying to call them. The man would actually end up calling the number and later be removed from the household. It turns out the guy was a cousin to one of the house's previous residents, which is how he got a key in the first place. Mm. One of the students even recalled running into the man in the basement at one point earlier in the month and asking who he was, but only to be met with a very vague answer. Ultimately, the students would blame the leasing company of the home for the incident, as they were responsible for failing to change the locks from the year before. True. I mean, that could have been bad. <laughs> In Thank June God of 2020, it didn't end too bad. a man named Christopher Town would make a life-threatening discovery while helping his friend move furniture in his basement. Unknown to both of them at the time was the fact that the house itself was built over a well. And so at one point, when Christopher was making his way across the, Almost room, fell. the floorboards just underneath him would snap, which Ooh. caused him to fall the 25-foot drop to the bottom. That's horrifying, bro, because you're falling in a well and it's like, that's just creepy, a well under a house? Like... I don't know, that's just giving me like the chills thinking about it. Like you don't know what's down there. Fortunately, there was water at the bottom to break his fall. Mm. Though this meant Christopher would have to use the rocks on the wall to hold his head above the water while he waited for the local fire department to arrive. How deep is that and shit? to make things worse, the water itself was at an extremely low temperature. Though after only a few minutes, the fire department was able to successfully get Christopher out using a hauling system. So imagine he felt something in that water, bro. Like something just brushed up against him and he didn't know. Or like there was a skeleton or body. Oh, my God. And other than almost getting hypothermia, Christopher would make it out unhurt. Listen, I would have been climbing up that shit. I would not wait for the damn fire department. I'm sorry. Mike Carroll was a man who lived in a small house in Lake Grove, New York, which was the same house he had grown up in. Mike was 57 at the time and only a few months prior had purchased the house. Though, while he was in the basement, Mike would make a disturbing discovery. He would find a full set of human bones buried under some dirt. Wow. But what makes this find so disturbing is the fact that the bones match the DNA of his father. 
when Mike was only eight months old, his father was said to have gone missing. And wow, yo, bro, that is so chilling. Like I could feel the hairs in the back of my neck standing up right now. His mom probably killed his dad, told him the dad went missing. And then all these years later, he discovers the bones, the remains of his father, bro. That's like a Lifetime movie or a movie right there or a show or episode or something, bro. That's crazy. That's probably like the spirit of his dad was guiding him to find the, the remains. And throughout his childhood, he would question his mother about this. But each time he was given a different story. So, of course, this made Mike want to find out for himself what had really happened to his father. Which is what gave him motivation to buy his childhood house in the first place. The newly found bones would obviously cause blame for the disappearance to be shifted onto his mother. Though, she had unfortunately passed away 20 years prior. Hmm. So, there's no way of confirming if she was responsible or not. And therefore, what really happened will forever be unknown. Well, can't they tell how he died? Like... Can't they fix? Well, it's only the bones, but there has to be some type of evidence of what happened to him. Was there blunt force trauma or something? Like, that sucks that you don't even know how it happened. In January of 2016, an appliance repairman was responding to a call from house owner Charles Price. Though, while the repairman was working in the basement, he would claim to have noticed something moving in a covered container in a back corner. Hey, yo. Curious, the repairman would lift off the cover and be met by a 200 pound alligator. Wow. But before running, the repairman would capture multiple pictures for proof to show the police. It turns out the house owner had the alligator for more than 20 years and was supposedly using it to help him with the house's mouse infestation. He would illegally keep the creature in a cage in his basement and claim to occasionally take him out into his backyard. Shortly after the repairman made the report, the alligator was confiscated by local animal control and later released into a better environment. The dude that owned that alligator was probably pissed, man. He had him for 20 years, bro. Nothing happened. You know, he, he's obviously taking care of the pet. I mean, even though that's not a pet you should have. Like, that reminds me of the time there was a dude in Harlem. He lived in a project building in Harlem and they found like lions or some shit in there. It was a lion, an alligator, it was something else too. A monkey. This discovery was posted to Reddit by an account under the name Daily Dish. In the post, the Redditor explains how a few years ago they shared a house with some friends, and in the first few months of living in the house, they hadn't spent much time in the basement. The basement was half finished, with the other half being a sort of dirt crawl space that extended under the porch of the house. They went on to explain how one night they decided to explore more thoroughly, and after grabbing a flashlight, they discovered a black canvas duffel bag in the very back of the dirt crawl space. Whoa. Disturbingly, in the duffel bag were two black ski masks, a hunting knife, and a single black leather glove. Murder weapons? The Redditor went on to explain how they decided to call the non-emergency police number and report the discovery, though the police weren't interested, and therefore the house owners decided to set fire to everything but the hunting knife. Whether that bag had any relation to any sort of criminal activity is still unknown to this day. So why would they burn it? They should have just kept it as evidence and dropped this it off to the police. This discovery comes from a guy who moved into a studio apartment in England. The guy claimed to have moved into the apartment without even viewing the place. And on arrival, he would discover something pre- That's a no-no right there, bro. Wherever you're going to move to, you need to go there and check it out for yourself first. You know, like every little nook and cranny walk around the entire apartment and make sure there's nothing there and you know you get a feeling of the vibe you know like you don't just randomly move somewhere you never even visited pretty disturbing so here's the apartment i moved into last week it's pretty small pretty nice rent was pretty cheap so i moved in without even viewing the place son got a ps3 up there and then when i got here i realized why the rent was so cheap the guy then goes on to give a tour of the apartment, and after a while, this sort of trap door on the floor can be seen. Got a bathroom, pretty standard. And then we look down here. What's this? Hmm, <laughs> check it out. That's definitely a handle. So I figured, you know, a bit of underfloor storage. So let's lift this up. Goes in pretty deep. 
Featured directly under this guy's apartment is some sort of dungeon looking basement. Yo. Hell no, I'm not going down there by myself, bro. That is creepy. And it goes further. Going off straight to the front. Address some graffiti on the wall. Oof. And here, this place is strange. There's like a brick seat or bed. They done the rest of the. They probably did some human sacrifices in that little dungeon, bro. That's definitely haunted. Apartment. The area itself is pretty big, featuring many large rooms and corridors. The fuck? What exactly this area was used for is unclear. Wow. <laughs> Way back. Imagine you sleeping and you hear a knock on that little floor panel. Back in 2002, a homeowner in Jefferson County, Wisconsin, found out that the foundation of her house was deteriorating. And so in November, she would apply for a loan to repair the foundation. But around two weeks later, while away at work, she would get a call from the workers hired to do the repair, explaining how they came across a gruesome discovery. They explained that as they started to remove the soil from the foundation wall in her basement, they had unearthed the full skeletal remains of a body. The skeleton was determined to be that of a 50-year-old male. Most disturbingly though, is the fact that after further inspection, it was determined that the house had been built right on top of an ancient burial ground. I was just about to say that it was probably built over like a ancient burial, like not a burial ground, but like a cemetery, some shit. That's estimated to be up to 170 years old. Hmm. Experts believe that in all likelihood, hundreds more skeletons are within a close proximity to the one found. Wow. This discovery would ultimately. Let me ask you something. If you find out some shit like that about where you live in, are you going to continue to live there? <laughs> I'm going to use that loan to get another house. I'm sorry. I can't stay there anymore put a stop to the That's house's crazy. renovation altogether. Mm, yeah, she did. In January of 2010, Wally and Linda DeForest would move into their new home in Goshen, Indiana. Though only a week after moving in, the couple would discover a live torpedo in their basement, something they obviously weren't aware of beforehand. Holy shit. Both of them noted how old the thing looked, but still obviously active. Would not touch there had that. been no drill holes to indicate it had been disarmed. The couple would end up calling the police, who would send out a bomb squad to extract the torpedo from the property's basement. And luckily, they were able to remove it without incident. That but is scary. considering the squad did confirm the explosive was still active upon arrival, the whole situation just makes you think how much worse things could have really gone. Hmm. Could have been a bad one. Alright, man, that was the reaction. The eight most disturbing things discovered in basements. I know he has another video about the attic, so I think I'll do that one next. But if you enjoyed this reaction, Jay, drop a like and subscribe. Let me know if y'all want me to continue doing these type of reactions. I'm gonna do them anyway, but yeah, they got a dash cam. They got all kinds of stuff on this channel. It's a dope underrated channel. It's called Chilling Scares. So y'all can subscribe to that channel if y'all interested. Yeah, y'all let me know how y'all feel, man. Drop a like, subscribe, it's your boy. I'ma holla. For my time goes by, they gon' raise a nigga jersey in the sky. Treat a nigga right, big dreaming all my life. Sure they wanna get some air, I go and get up when I fly. Taking off on these niggas, I retire. The minute I catch fire, I smoked them all before, just revisiting the high.